during the time in the womb the brain is developing all the time and the basic functions so that the control of um, breathing and um, sight, hearing and so on are all developing. So the baby develops its ability to sense the outside world. We now know that towards the end of pregnancy babies can learn quite a lot. They can learn to that they the babies in the womb swallow the amniotic fluid which is in turn the chemistry of that is affected by what the woman eats so there's been research showing that if women eat very spicy food the babies when they're born are more likely to turn to the smell spicy smells they get they learn to be enjoy the food they're going to taste later um, it's also known that they can learn um, to respond to particular music. Again, at the end of pregnancy, there's one study where women who listened to the soap opera Neighbours a lot, when the baby was born, if the tune of the Neighbours was played, the baby looked up and alert, and they didn't respond to other music in the same way. So the, there is evidence that this is really at the end of pregnancy, the last six, eight weeks, babies do start to learn in a way that will prepare them for what they're going to respond to in the world outside. So the organs form in the first trimester, the middle trimester things are settling down, the, the cells are finding their final place, and then the third trimester is particularly important for the brain and for general growth, the cells expanding, getting bigger. We now realise that if we're interested in the best outcome for our children, we mustn't just think about how we treat them from when they're born, but what happens in the womb. Research over the last 10 years has really shown that how the baby develops in the womb has a big effect on their health for the rest of their life. And this is true for the physical health. We know that babies that are born smaller at birth are more likely to have vulnerability to cardiovascular disease and actually die of cardiovascular disease in their 70s. But we also know that there's a big effect on neurodevelopment. The emotional state of the mother while she's pregnant affects how the baby's brain develops in the womb. There's research showing that if the mother is more stressed, more anxious, her fetus develops in a way that makes the later child more likely to suffer from anxiety or depression themselves, to have more likely to have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, more likely to have conduct disorder, more likely to have cognitive problems. A whole range of different problems that the child will be more at risk from if the mother is stressed while she's pregnant. Nothing is perfect. I think that mothers also shouldn't worry too much if their children are anxious. Some children are predisposed to be anxious and some children are predisposed to be to have various, you know, more vulnerable to something like ADHD. I think with all these things we're talking about, there's an environment, an interaction between the genetics, the actual innate predisposition of the child and the environment. And I think that a, an emotionally balanced, happy mother is likely to help to make an emotionally balanced, happy child. But it's not the whole story, so that Though we want to do all we can to do this, we mustn't blame mothers for problems that children have either. I do think that as a society, we all should be supporting pregnant women more. Employers, for example, um, extended members of the family, grandparents, you know, the mother's own mother can help, friends can help. But I feel we all, I think what I'd like to do is the whole society to become more aware of this so that we all feel that we can give in different ways and professional when necessary, give more emotional support to pregnant women.